Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday evening, so let's begin. First up, let's take a look at your COVID-19 in New Hampshire information. A hundred and eight number of people in New Hampshire who have tested positive for COVID-19. 428,405 number of people worldwide who have tested positive. One number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 13 number of people hospitalized with COVID-19. 802 number of of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. Coas, zero in Coas. 21 people in Grafton that have it. Seven in Carroll that have it. Seven in Belknot that have it. Five in Stratford that have it. Four in Merrimack that have it. One in Sullivan that have it. One in Cheshire that have it. 20 in Hillsborough that have it. In 42 in Rockingham that have it. E new cases each day in New Hampshire. In the purple are the daily new positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, new hospitalizations. And in the red is deaths. Common symptoms. Fever, cough, and difficult breathing. How it spreads. And prevention tips. Demand increases at New Hampshire Food Bank aimed COVID-19 crisis. Organizers support other agencies across state. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Sharice LeClaire. doesn't stop here at the New Hampshire Food Bank, especially now in the middle of a crisis that is impacting everyone, with many Granite Staters losing their income. Our demand is definitely up. Um, we're seeing our distribution increase. Uh, we are seeing agencies that we haven't seen in a while purchasing from us and purchasing more. Right now, the food bank is working with its agencies across the state to provide food and figure out where the need is greatest. We are the state's only food bank. We receive no state or federal funding for our food distribution, and we have over 400 partner agencies throughout the state, and there are soldiers in the field. Soldiers in the field, like those at the Boys and Girls Club and Conquer, they're picking up meals today. What we're seeing is a lot of families... Um, who need supplies, food supplies. Boys and Girls Clubs are distributing food out of Concord as well as their sites in Allenstown and Laconia. It's not just limited to our membership. Um, anybody who needs food can come and see us. What you see now is uh, a product of uh, some great healthy donations that we received yesterday. In the New Hampshire Food Bank's culinary kitchen, they're doubling production, making more than 3,000 meals today. So we're trying to anticipate being able to meet all of those crisis needs uh, that our agencies around the state are, are going to be facing. The easiest way for you to help at home is to head online, donate that way, nhfoodbank.org. That way they can purchase the food that's needed for New Hampshire families. In Manchester, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Kenora virus. In Massachusetts, Wednesday, March 25th, update. Let's take a look at that update for all of you now.
New cases, 679. Tested, 19,74. Total cases, 1,838. Hospitalizations, 103. Incomplete data. And deaths are 15. Governor Baker of Massachusetts extends school closure in Massachusetts through the end of April. Kenora virus in Maine. What to know about the outbreak in the state? Let's take a listen to that video from WMTW News 8 Maine. Governor changed the recommendations that she had last week issued to a mandate, one that would ask non-essential businesses, places like shopping malls, gyms, and nail salons to close, but this would still keep open essential businesses, places like farmer, pharmacies and grocery stores. She said that this is all in an effort to uh, practice social distancing, to limit the amount of pe time that people are in confined spaces together. She also issued some guidelines and some things that large stores and other places should implement. We want to give you a look at some of those here, some of those recommendations. For stores with a physical retail space of more than 5,000 square feet, she's asking that they limit customers to no more than 100 at a time to enhance curbside pickup and delivery services. Also staggering hours for shoppers who may be of a certain age or those who could be potentially more impacted. We've seen some folks do that here in Maine. And also closing fitting rooms. Again, this is all in an effort to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and practice social distancing. I know people in my community enjoy a Beano game on the weekends at the Elks Club where the American Legion suffers on Saturday night. We can't do those anymore, not for now. The next 15 days are critical and flattening that curve so that Maine stays ahead of this thing as much as humanly possible. This all goes into effect at midnight tonight and will last for the next two weeks time. Governor Mills says that she has considered really all of the options. Other 15 other states have issued more uh, stricter regulations like stay at home orders and things of that nature. She says she's hoping that it doesn't get to that and that if we continue to just improve that social distancing behavior that we can continue to stay on these recommendations. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Crews fight fire at Puritan Backroom Restaurant. Fire causes about 80,000 in damage, officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. When you move homes, you move more than just yourself. That's why Xfinity has an easy-to-use online experience to get your TV and internet up and running in a matter of minutes. Awesome. Simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today to get started. The Puritan Backroom Restaurant in Manchester sustained about $80,000 in damage in a fire this morning. Fire crews got to the restaurant just after 7 for smoke in the building. Officials say there were flames in a partition wall that traveled to the roof level. We went to go check on the roof because it, it was actually got near the ductwork for the, the ventilation system for the kitchen. So it was going up that a little bit, so we wanted to check the roof structure. Restaurant owners said on Facebook they will reopen as soon as it is safe to do so. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Woman faces charges after deadly crash in Salem. Woman killed in crash Monday. 
Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Now, a woman is facing charges in a deadly crash in Salem. It happened yesterday near 231 Main Street. Police say an SUV driven by 57-year-old Elaine Reagan of Goffstown struck a car, causing it to hit a stone wall. A woman in that car died. Reagan has been charged with reckless operation, reckless conduct with a deadly weapon, and aggravated DWI. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Roy Small, known for recent connection with recycled percussion, has died. Lakes Region man spent early career as Roy of Sun impersonator. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. A Lakes Region man who you may know from his relationship or partnership with Recycled Percussion has passed away. A Roy Small spent his early career as a Roy Orbison impersonator. He recently connected with the band after someone stole and pawned some of his guitars. In a Facebook post, frontman Justin Spencer says Roy changed his life and calls him a symbol of kindness in a world of chaos. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And all of us here at the Riley King Network send our thoughts and prayers to Roy Small and his daughter, and also to um, Recycle Percussion. We will miss Roy Small. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Wednesday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Wednesday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. Your Nasdaq closed in the red and went down. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. Gold closed in the red and went down. Oil closed in the green and went up. U.S. 10-year closed flat. Euro slash USD closed in the red and went down. And GIF closed in the green and went up. Dow jumps more than 2% posts first back-to-back -back gain since February. The Dow Joe Industrial Average jumped more than 13% in two days as the White House and congressional leaders said they had agreed to a massive stimulus bill to combat the economic slowdown from the coronavirus epidemic. Coronavirus live updates. Settlement plan trouble for New York, Como says. At least 285 people have died in New York State. A pandemic of the novel coronavirus has killed more than 20 thousand eight hundred people worldwide. There are more than four hundred and sixty thousand diagnosed cases of the new respiratory illness known officially as COVID-19 spanning every continent except Antarctica. According to data compiled by the Centers for Systems Science and Engineering at John Hopkins University. With more than 62,000 diagnosed cases in the United States, has the third highest national total behind Italy and China. The virus has rapidly spread across every U.S. as well as Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, killing at least 
1869 people. Today's biggest developments. Prince Charles tests positive. Italy death toll reaches 7,503. Sentiment plan terrible for New York, Como says. Senators in White House clinch deal on settlement package. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a newsy bar coming up in a little bit. Good night and bye everyone.